Good morning. I'm the Complex Games Apologist, and we're going to embark upon our first physical product review today. We will be reviewing the GURPS Traveler line by Steve Jackson Games, put out around the turn of the millennium, but still available in PDF form and easy to pick up in other places. I believe that in spite of some wrinkles and flaws, it is the best introductory product which can show you what the Third Imperium is as a setting. And it hasn't had any of the really big modulations that the Third Imperium has undergone under Mongoose's tutelage. It's still without drones, without transhumanism. It's still the old version. And I will share with you some of my insights into how to bring modernity and believability into that setting without being radical, without turning Traveler into Eclipse Phase. Because I think the Third Imperium really is the backbone, for me, of what Traveler is as an experience. And that it, it transcends system, regardless of whether you enjoy GURPS or you want to play in the original Traveler rule sets, or perhaps you would like to go further afield and use something like Burning Wheel, parenthesis, Empires. So, without further ado, the book. I have owned this book for almost 20 years, and it is starting to get a bit worn in the spine. Steve Jackson softbacks are relatively durable. This one spent a fair amount of time in a messenger bag of mine as I tried to evangelize the system to people. And so it's seen a disproportionate amount of wear. It is still holding together. We're not losing any pages out the side, but I'm going to give you a heads up about that in a moment because some of the books in this line do have this problem. Okay, so let's tackle the way that the content is absorb. Yes, I do enjoy coloring. Everything is black and white in Steve Jackson Games stuff, and I actually think that that's a good value for money. Their art in the 90s was really bad, and this product really signifies the start of them contracting artists digitally to try and improve, and I think for the most part they did. The GURPS Traveler line was developed under the supervision of Lauren Wiseman, who I like to call the uncredited, uncredited second author of Traveler, specifically of the Traveler universe. Um, and then I think a lot of the kind of crunchy details that make up that setting of the Third Imperium are not necessarily his idea, but they are, they find their voice. So what is the in Third Imperium? Life. I'll talk about that in greater depth in another video, but for the, suffice it to say, it is a far future, wide-spanning, federal system of government under which independent worlds engage in trade and avoid shooting each other to death. And they do so with a presidential monarchy as the pinnacle, uh, which is called the Empire. The Imperial Navy survives basically on small revenue tariffs on interstellar trade, and that's all that's there to defend humanity uh, from external invaders, except that individual worlds are also in responsible for their own defense. There's lots of rules about what you can and can't have for your military and your own world. There's lots of interesting nuances to the mega corporations that inhabit the Third Imperium, but... Let's recoup now to the format of this book. There's a brief introductory passage which talks about kind of the core bits of what kind of aliens are in this world, what kind of campaigns you may find interesting playing this game, and then it moves on into something a lot like the Harn Decks, which is a kind of quasi-encyclopedia which goes through just entries about various locations and things. It's a hard way to absorb things, and I think that especially from the GM side, as you try and wrap your head around things, I would very much prefer something like starting in a spaceport, walking into a bar, getting lectured by an NPC. This is one of those few cases where I think the White Wolf method actually would work because of just the sheer amount. However, 
because it doesn't make apologies for itself, because it doesn't decide which elements of the setting to glamorize, you are left to do so yourself. And I think that that is a virtue in the sense that, you know, if you don't want to make a big deal out of how the computer is the size of a refrigerator on your spaceship, then don't. Or just simply ignore it altogether. If you want to kind of not really acknowledge the advances in biotechnology that we anticipate now, if you want to avoid places like Westworld in your Traveler universe, well, you can because the setting doesn't really pin down that, you know, I'm super attached to this, like, anti-transhuman, hardcore human DNA, like, we're pure, we're not gonna put computers on our brains aesthetic, which is Kind of a lot of the culture of what the Third Imperium is, is is just basic people. I have always pinned it down to basic employment that people need jobs, and so it's just really unpopular to automate away jobs in this far future because otherwise you'll become very unpopular as a ruler. And solving those problems of a welfare state is actually a little heavy for most governments and so they just avoid it altogether by uh, avoiding robotics. Of course there's a context for that. Robotics is associated with the Zodani consulate. The Zodani are these psionic kind of mind controlling Fahrenheit 451 thought policing sort of folks that are out there as an alternative human state. Of course there's a human diaspora. It's a secret for the players to discover why, but as humans first went into space thousands of years ago, they discovered other humans that had developed their own civilizations uh, on other planets and in fact had been transplanted there. And there is a supremacist movement where humans from Earth, where humans originally evolved, do get political at one point, but suffice it to say, that's something that you can sort of use as much of as you want, because it doesn't interject verve from White Wolf-style storytelling. Now, let's move on. There's this encyclopedic catalog. Steve Jackson Games has always been fond of these sidebars. Let me see if I can get one into the frame. And I think this is really awesome, because this actually kind of brings in nuance, it brings in micro detail into the narrative of these products. Uh, there's the beginning of digital watercolor in some of this art. I think that it was a very young medium at the time, and some of it's a little clunky, but I think that it's forgivable. I, I've always loved these kind of line drawing style stuff, and I think it's the better pieces of art in this entire line of products are the line drawings. And then the rest of the book is consumed with these templates for characters. Um, of course, Traveler as a game, in the classic sense, is dominated by a life path system of character generation, where you roll dice and you can die before you ever hit play. And this is, of course, sidetracked, uh, segued away from into a GURPS method where you pick and choose little bits and you fill out the character. The trouble is that there's an asymmetry of the point totals of these various templates. And, you know, if you want to sit down and play GURPS the way that you normally would with 110 points or 150 points per character, then someone's going to be suddenly paralyzed as they need to populate the additional, say, <clears throat> um, 60 points that aren't covered in the template. So overall, I find this section not particularly conducive to actual play. It does tell you what kind of skills uh, and how finely grained you want to split up the skill system for groups, but this is by far not the most valuable part of this setting. Uh, there's a good technology section that really does flesh things out, and then there's just lots more details about kind of basic starting player character ships that I find really pretty universal, actually usable in other systems, and actually did the grit of details that are independent of system where, you know, the number of G's of acceleration, the number of displacement tons of cargo that your ship can carry, all that's covered in a way that is going to be able to be taken up and put in another setting, or, sorry, another system. Okay, now this is actually the weakest book in the line, and now I'm going to pull out what I believe to be 
more or less the strongest two books, which are the amazing alien races of the Traveler universe. If there's anything that I think really is the brand of Traveler, which really signifies what's awesome about it, it's that they take two arm, two legs aliens, and they push them to their limits. So they push them to a place where your character, if they are one of these aliens, is going to be playing something that's really from another planet, that is got a whole different value system and a different way of looking at the world. And they do this by kind of step by step talking through the origins of a species, their early history, how they made the transition into a spacefaring civilization, and what that means to their personality in an interstellar medium where there's other species out there. And I think that this is really the pinnacle of what was accomplished in this line. There are some other books about the various services that characters serve in. Um, first in, Ground Forces, which are respectively about the Imperial Scout Service, the Imperial Marines, slash the local Imperial Army units. And they do flesh out details there. Far Trader it provides a very finely grained supplement about how to understand interstellar trade. I don't find it to be particularly interesting and it's it's a little too caught up in minutia and not game-like enough to actually be implemented in a way that your players are going to be able to interface with. Like you can use this system to generate the parcels of goods that are going to come up in Far Trader, but your player is not going to be really able to play with it. Um, at least not at the session. I mean, it's something to do by play by email. It's something to consume lots of hours with. And I don't think it really captures that desperation when mail is looking for a cargo in Serenity. And that's one of the things about Traveler is that it's interesting that I think it, it carries forward into this new age of science fiction remarkably well. And that, that's my biggest recommendation for it. And I think that these, these books are a great lens for it. Now, let me talk about the actual location books. These are, there's two of them, one uh, for Spinward Marches and the other one for the Solomani Rim, which is actually the area around Earth where humans first made contact with another empire called the Volani. Um, these are these are good. Um, they walk through kind of the local species, the local minor states, and then they go subsector by subsector. I find this to be actually a fairly difficult way of interpreting proximity of worlds these subsectors are arbitrarily drawn out on a grid, and this means that, say, you know, District 268 is accessed by Glisten, which is this developed industrial complex of worlds. Um, District 268 is an area of active colonization of um, megacorporations seeking out resources. It's a kind of a place where Wayland yutani would find its home, and it's also a place where, if you want to tell those kind of settlers against the dinosaurs type stories, or you know, a frontier rebellion against a dictator. These are places, this is this is where it would be behoove you to do so. But to understand, you know, where where would be the great jumping off point for these, this adventure? Uh, what kind of context would the starport, the, you know, the, what kind of bar would your characters be meeting at to accept this quest to go to District 268? You'd probably be starting in Glisten. And so that's that's actually at page 94. District 268 is in page 73. This is accentuated. This is much worse when you think about kind of how, you know, Cronor subsector is on page 37. Jewel subsector is on page 57. And sometimes these this is really difficult to actually fox out. I think that the printing, the actual print size is a little bit large, and the actual details about these worlds is remarkably light in a way that I think is frustrating, especially now that we know that um, beside, beyond the main world, uh, there's lots of other planets that are very interesting to land on and interact with. We know this from our own solar system. There's no coverage of those. Um, you're left to kind of wander in the weeds about that, so you don't get a solar system diagram. You don't get kind of a rudimentary continental map. They don't tell you if the world has a moon. Uh, a list goes on about kind of details that I think would be really awesome to have, especially, you know, you drop out of hyperspace into this unknown star system and you want to know stuff. And you don't get it. Um, 
And part of this, I think, is because there's just there's not enough space the way they laid out this book with this really large format print. I know some people have bad eyes, um, especially when you want to use something at the table and you want to look up a world. I just, I, I, like, look at this. There's a page break. They start talking about this planet, and then they finish talking about it here. This is really frustrating. And this is another section where I think that it really would have behooved them to have the sidebars to talk about stuff that's going on in the subsector, talk about some adventure hooks, talk about some interesting maps or planets, and instead they just really blow up the size of the text here. Um, and the biggest frustration of all is um, they tell you the diameter of the world, but the surface gravity is often not there. The time to the jump point and you know whether the jump point is masked i.e. you have to get out to 100 diameters of the star go look at my other video about the jump drive um that's also missing so the critical parts of how the ftl functions uh, with these worlds in the system and the setting uh is missed so these are really fascinating books to read and the spinward marches has had almost 30 years of people playing in it and yet it's had remarkably little sort of fleshing out in the way that Harn has. Um, and maybe that's the traveler philosophy, is that you're supposed to carpet bag your own stuff. Um, I always like more, and I can always not use it. Um, but traveler guys um, are from a different generation than me, and they have a different outlook. So if you are wondering what are the highlights what are the interesting parts of that game that they played so long ago and still do and you want to get a window onto that i think that the gurps traveler line is a great place to start specifically because of the value in these books um nowadays the prices is, is really right so i hope that this review was helpful i know it wasn't particularly brief but i think we did touch on sort of the philosophy of these books, their format, and I hope that you have a great time trying to explore science fiction role-playing for yourself. I'm the Complex Anthropologist.